going to show you how to make a Halloween haunted house tear tray and I'm using mostly Dollar Tree supplies to do it. On this channel I love to share easy DIYs and budget home decor and if we haven't met yet my name is Lisa and this is Our Gray House. Things aren't as scary when they're fun and affordable am I right? So Dollar Tree comes in for the win and offers a pretty good selection of wood blanks. I've used several in other projects but today I'm specifically looking for haunted houses haunted house shapes, and things that I can use to make my haunted house tiered tray. As you can see, I picked up two of that one shape, and I picked up another little house and two other little houses. And I'm trying to make mine kind of on my tier tray in a certain way, so I am cutting away part of, and this is all going to make sense later, <laughs> but I'm cutting away part of the house where it's going to fit onto my tier tray directly. Now that that's done, I am going to take some of this Rust-Oleum Chalked Ultra Matte Paint in the color Charcoal and I'm going to just give it a rough paint. I'm not trying to, I mean, I'm trying to paint it, but I'm not trying to be like, I don't know. I'm just painting it, <laughs> just quickly painting it. And of course, I'm painting that little house that I had and the other one that I got from the Dollar Tree. And I'm leaving a section of a blank because I thought, you know what? I want to do something a little bit differently. Didn't need to leave a blank to do it, but I ended up leaving it blank to do it. But I took some newspaper and I kind of crumpled it up and I just kind of glued it onto the houses. And what I should have done was leave it a little more, I was trying to give more texture to the piece. And to give it more texture, I really should have left it more crumply and elevated, not as flat, but you still get the same effect. I just think it would have helped if I'd left it a little bit more, like, I don't know, <laughs> more humps in it or something. I did say most of these items came from Dollar Tree, but this came from the Target Dollar Spot. It's a skeleton of a dog and a cat. And I'm gonna be using the skeleton of the dog for this particular little like window on my tear tray. And I'm trying to decide where I'm actually gonna put it. Captain's gonna help me. And <laughs> I'm trying to decide where I wanna put it. And then I, okay, I'm gonna put it in that window right there. But I gotta kinda figure out how to get it to set up. Like I have to make a ledge, what am I gonna do? I wanted you to be able to see more of the skeleton, so I'm cutting a little bit bigger window hole area, <laughs> and I'm just using that little craft knife to, to do it. This wood is pretty easy to, like, you know, score and kind of, you know, cut out, but you have to be careful too, because you can also chip and break it. So what I decide to do is use a craft stick, and I'm gonna use that as like the base, but then I'm also gonna be using a tower tumbling block to kind of set it up. And I just kind of glue that in place, making sure it is where I need it to be. I'm also making, I'm taking some like the popsicle size craft sticks and I'm just cutting them and I'm cutting them into little sections because I want them to look like little boards. Like, you know, you see a haunted house, it's boarded up and I'm creating some little boards to board it up with. To paint them, I just take some masking tape and I put sticky side up and I put those little craft sticks down on there and I paint them. And I'm using various colors because I want this haunted house to look old, grungy, neglected, haunted. <laughs> so I'm just using, I'm using black. I'm using espresso brown. I think I used and a little bit of gray. I'm just trying to use all kinds of, and I'm, again, I'm trying to be a little messy with it. So it doesn't look like, you know, a well-kept house or anything. I'm using some wood glue that I got from Dollar Tree and that's what I'm going to be making the ledge. But I realized the sides of the little box that he's going to be in, they need to be painted black because you're going to be able to see it from the front. So I'm painting those black and I just created the box. And while that's drying and, and setting and stuff, I have these rub on transfers that I got from Dollar Tree. I'm just cutting them out. You're not really going to be able to see the spider necessarily, but you might get a glimpse of it, you know, when the shadows and the lights hit it a certain way. And so I'm just trying to create some layers, some textures to this piece. Y'all, this video is part of the Jack-O-Lantern Jamboree Open Invite Playlist. And my friend Ellie from DIY From House to Home organized it. And I'm just telling y'all, she organizes and just creates the funnest playlist. Funnest? Is that a word? Anyway, I'm making it a word. The most fun playlist. And I just love crafting with her. So I'm going to have a link to Ellie from DIY From House to Home. I'm going to have a link to her channel down below. Check her out. Subscribe. She's awesome. As well as the channel link to Life with Moxie. Again, another awesome crafter. 
you don't want to miss it be sure and subscribe to both of those ladies and check out the playlist i wanted to create a harvest moon so i just cut out this little circle out of cardboard and i'm gonna paint it am i painting it right now am i gonna i'm trimming it now i'm gonna paint it <laughs> so i used kind of a white color antique white i think and then a yellow and then some various shades of orange and i did have this like lazy susan little tray that i paint on sometimes and again i'm just swirling around i don't really have a like real rhyme or reason to it but until i like how it looks that's when i stop and i took some more of the rub-on transfers that i got from dollar tree and i'm using some bats they kind of look like birds in a way but you know what they're bats i'm just i'm letting you know they're bats and i'm just adding them to because i'm like oh you could see the bats flying away in the harvest moon and that was the look i was going for and I realized the piece of cardboard wasn't going to be super stable. So I took some craft sticks and the jumbo, you know, craft sticks. And I'm just kind of measuring them to see how I'm going to put them onto there. Hot gluing it. And yeah, yeah, I just end up putting several across there just like that. And that stabilizes it some. It's not still not super stable, but you know, it's better than it was. To put the dog skeleton inside his little box, his little shadow box thing, I just used some E6000. It was a little tricky to get him to stay, but I eventually just kind of propped it up and let him dry. And it worked. So then I am going to take some of this glow in the dark paint. Now, does it really work? I don't know. I feel like you have to use a whole heck of a lot of it to be able to actually see it glow in the dark. But I thought, wouldn't it be fun to have some glow in the dark paint on this haunted house? Because in case it did get enough light to it or something maybe you would see like some extra eerie shadows or something i don't know but that's what i'm doing and i'm actually painting him with it i'm painting the inside of the box with it i put on some of that glow in the dark paint on the front of the house too oh now i'm gluing the back of his little box and i'm leaving little spots so i can stick in i can make sure i can fit in one of these little lights that i got from dollar tree and I needed to paint the base of this one particular house. And as I lay it down, you can kind of see where I painted with that glow in the dark paint. It's adding some swirls. It's adding some like, you know, dimension to it. At least in my mind it is. And then I realized you can kind of see around the box. So I'm painting <laughs> the whole box in the back, even though you're not really seeing it, seeing it. But if you can kind of see it, I'm painting it so that it will have the same effect that I'm looking for. I wanted some characters or some like, yes, yeah, some characters, I guess you would call them, to be peeping out of the windows of the haunted house. So I took some more cardboard, I painted it with the antique white, and then I'm taking some of the rub-on transfers and I'm putting them onto the piece of cardboard that I painted. This is gonna give it some stability. This is gonna be able to let me like set them up and you know prop them up on the different parts of the house that I want to. And so I'm rubbing, I'm rubbing them on, I'm transferring them on, and then I'm just going to take those scissors that you see there and I'm going to cut those out so that I can apply them to the haunted house. This is so easy. It's budget friendly, y'all. This is not taking, it's, I'm just using scraps of stuff. So I just think this is a cool way to decorate a tear tray. As you can see, I'm already liking how it looks, to be honest. I'm just trying to see where am I going to put the little different pieces. I want a ghost popping out of one of the windows. I want those little, there's like a little skull head and some eyeballs. I want those popping out of those windows there. And I'm just gluing everything in place. I'm also gluing down the pumpkins and I'm using little clamps that I got from Dollar Tree just to kind of hold them down because they tended to bend up a little bit, I guess, because they're, because <laughs> they're cardboard. And then I'm taking those little wood pieces that I made to look like boards, you know, like it was boarded up or something. And I'm putting those onto the um, front of the piece as well. I re I'm just really thinking it looks looking cute. Now I'm going to make some little, I guess, um, books. <laughs> I'm making, I'm making books y'all, but they're like, I guess like spell books. <laughs> I was trying to think what you want to call them. Anyway, I am taking some tower tumbling blocks. These were already dyed this color and um, I don't see them in the stores anymore, but this is what I used. You can paint them whatever color you want to. And they have at Dollar Tree these stickers that are like the front of a book and the binding of a book. So I just used those and stuck those onto the tower tumbling blocks. Now, 
the they didn't stick super well so i did kind of have to glue them and clamp them down and stuff like that but i thought hey it was an easy way to make a cool looking book now if i'd had the time or taken the time i guess because i probably had the time but <laughs> i just didn't make the time to do it i would have like tried to make it look like little book pages on the side like drawn little lines and stuff maybe put like um, painted it like antique white on the sides or something i didn't do that but you know that would have been a good idea <laughs> so i don't need to show you me painting this white because i paint it black later i got these three or two of these from goodwill and i actually got them for a dollar they were marked like two bucks but she gave them to me for a dollar each and i got the other one at dollar tree for a dollar 25. And so I've just taken off the stickers and I'm spray painting with Rust-Oleum Talked Ultra Matte Spray Paint in the color Charcoal. Just kind of giving it a once over. This is my spray tent. I don't have spray tent. I am making crystal balls. And so I'm taking this, I guess it's a, a document envelope or something. And I cut out four inch circles and I left like a little tongue to them or a little tab. I guess you could call it a tab little tab to them because this is going to go inside the crystal ball and this will all make sense in just a minute but I cut out several because I wanted to practice with one of them and not ruin them you know from the get-go now I'm painting this little thing this little riser black I really wish I'd had um this was higher but it's not anyway it doesn't matter the crystal ball is actually a glass ornament that I got from Hobby Lobby Dollar Tree didn't have theirs in stock and so you know I had to work with what I had I'm taking that clear plastic and I'm taking a rub on transfer and I'm rubbing it onto the circle part of the, the plastic. And what I'm going to do is roll it up and put it inside the crystal ball. And then it's going to look like something's floating inside or like you're seeing a vision of something inside. But the first circle I make was like four inches wide because the the ornaments four inches wide you don't need it that wide so I cut it down and I cut it down until I felt like I got the right size and then you um oh I needed to paint the little end of the ornament where you see me painting it because you could see it when you put it inside the um the candlesticks so I painted those blocks so they would blend in better then you roll up that little thing that you made you leave that little tab sticking out and then then you you're gonna see in just a minute. It turns out actually pretty good. There was one that you can kind of see that it's got something inside of it, but the ghost one really turns out pretty good, I think. And so I hot glue the tab down, and then I just cut off the extra tab so that it'll sit inside that candlestick really nicely. And then to put it all together, I just take my hot glue and I put some hot glue either around the little base of the ornament or I put some inside the candlestick holder or I do both <laughs> and then I just press it down hold it for a few seconds and it's good to go and this is how one of them turned out see it turned out really pretty good now the three of them together the light you couldn't really see it but they turned out cute now I'm showing you how I was going to put it all together but that was just a mess and it was just going to be boring here's how it is done and I think I think it looks really good I got this little tombstones from the target dollar spot there's my little harvest moon yeah, it's Harvest Moon. I was going to say Sun. I keep thinking Sun, like from Lion King. But anyway, um, then there's like another little skeleton. There's that, that um, ghost peeking out. Yeah, just some things that I got. And I'm just setting it all around. What I'd like to do is get some of that, um, like, web, not web, um, kind of like stringy, what do you call it, cheesecloth? And kind of like drape that around so that you don't see the bottom of the tear tray. Oh, those little mummies back there, I made those last year and I just think those turned out adorable. But yeah, that's my little tear tray. It's, I call it that the cat tear tray because it's near <laughs> where I feed the cats. But yeah, I love how it turned out. And it's, you know, spooky cute, spooky scary. I don't know, it's a little darker. Try to give you a couple different variations on how it looks with all the lights on, with some of the lights on. I don't really see it glowing anywhere, but I do think it looks old. And I was thinking, you know, I probably should have put some sort of background back there so you don't see my air fryer, you don't see my kitchen tiles, but I really like how it turned out. I think it, I think it turned out really good. And those lights are the purple ones. I got those from Dollar Tree. It just takes a battery to run. You don't have to plug them in or anything. And there's that little dog just sitting there. Yeah, I think it turned out cute. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Here's another look at the projects in today's videos. Those are my crystal balls and that little mummy I made last year. 
But yeah, I just think it looks all so cute. I think it came together so well. And yeah, it kind of looks spooky. But not like super spooky, but kind of spooky maybe. <laughs> Thank you all so much for joining me today as I do appreciate the company while I craft and create. And I just think it all turned out so cute. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. If there's anything you would do differently or anything that you think I should have tried, let me know. And don't forget also, there is a playlist. I mentioned it before, but there's a playlist. And I especially want you to check out Ellie and Michelle's channels because they're supportive. They're awesome gals. They're creative. And I'd love it if you would check out their channels and subscribe to them as well. And if you want to follow me on social media, like here on YouTube or over on Instagram or TikTok or something like that, my handle is Our Gray House, but just don't follow me in real life though, because that's creepy. Bye.